What's the best way to get your dog to play with you? Interactive play with your dog is one of the single best things you can learn to do with your dog. You learn so much more about your dog. You learn so much more about how to communicate with each other. Honestly, it is one of the best things you can do. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing my best tips on how you can build desire, choose the right style of play, and all of the things to take into account when you want to build your dog's desire to play with you. Once you figure this out, honestly, the sky's the limit. If we haven't met before, my name's Anna Laurie, I'm the founder of Genius Canine, and I've been a professional police dog handler for the last 20 years. And I've been an instructor in the National Police Dog Training School for Scotland. If you haven't already done it, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. So if you're ready, let's dive in. If I'm talking about interactive play, I'm talking about any play that involves me and my dog or you and your dog playing together in a style of play, which is a cooperative style of play. I throw you a toy, you pick it up, you bring it back to me, you give it up to me and we get to play again. We perhaps have a tug toy. You grab the toy, we have a tug of war, you let go of the toy. There's a lot of cooperation going on there between me and my dog. We couldn't really play that game if we weren't both present to play the game. So I couldn't half-heartedly play. This does not count, right? Scrolling on my phone, scrolling on my phone. Throw a toy, scrolling on my phone. No, that does not count. That is not interactive play. And people say, well, I'm throwing the toy, they're bringing it back. That's cooperative, isn't it? Doesn't count, <laughs> doesn't count. So. A cooperative style of play where you and your dog are present playing together, all right? Now, easier said than done, it does sound like a really easy thing to do, but so many people really struggle with it and it's unnecessary because there's so many things we can do to help you and your dog get to the point where play is something you love to do and you look forward to doing and it's like one of the best parts of your day my knowledge about this particular subject it's deep working for 20 years as a dog handler with my own dog and then teaching other dog handlers play forms the heart of everything we do so i've come out of the police training bubble and my police dog handling career and of the videos that i see of either trainers or people doing some training with their dogs about one percent maybe less actually reward their dogs with a toy or some style of play it's very really kind of dull and boring and it's usually food. And th there's more that we can bring out of it that will mean you can connect with your dog in the most complicated of places and most distracting of places. But you do need to learn how to play with your dog. And you also need to learn some of the skills so that play feels really natural. When it comes to interactive play, how do we even build desire for play in the first place? The first one for me is selecting the style of play. And that takes a little bit of observation of each individual dog because every single one of them loved playing in a completely different way to the other. They used to have to adapt to different styles of play. And I have made mistakes in the past. I've thought that my dog loved a particular style of play when actually she didn't. Once I adapted and changed and tuned into what she really did love, and adapted that style of play, but all of a sudden, what looked like a kind of worried, disconnected dog, all of a sudden became really engaged. Even for me, with lots of experience, we can sometimes get it wrong. We think they like something, actually, they don't. <laughs> or they don't like it as much as you think they do. The thing about it is, it's about what's reinforcing to the dog. If a dog is reinforced by something, they are more likely to repeat the thing that you want them to do or the thing that they find reinforcing. That's what reinforcement is. It just increases the chances of something being repeated because they're getting something that they really love. So to give them something they don't love or give them nothing at all, you're missing a trick. That's what training dogs is all about. It's how we do build connection. And that's why, because we go down these roads with rewards and learning more about how we can apply them, it means we don't have to use punishment. It enables them to get a connection with us that they wouldn't otherwise get and they would maybe all stay a little bit disconnected and be a bit suspicious of us because they're not sure about us. Observe what your dog really loves. Be flexible with your observations and don't box yourself into a corner and say, my dog likes to fetch and that's all you ever do. Some dogs 
It will be predominantly their biggest strength. It's what I call a foot in the door. You'll hear me talk about this a lot in the Foundations for Life program. Once we get a little foot in the door with even the smallest type of play, we can start to build confidence. We can start to build connection. Not many dog trainers that I can see on the internet and on social media really talk about rewards and how to deliver them and what's right for that particular dog. And it's a really important piece of the puzzle. We skirt across these things quite often. You spend just a little bit of time sorting out what my individual dog loves. When you get it right, you start to almost be able to communicate with each other without actually speaking. You start to understand each other a lot better. And it all happens within interactive play. This is why I say it's like magical powers because there's so many things within play alone that if you can bring yourself to invest that bit of time in actually making it better and making your skills better, there's all sorts of brilliant, amazing knock-on happy side effects that it almost makes life easier on its own. If you can play with your dog, the sky's the limit, really. The sky is the limit. So selection of the style of play, that's really what's important. So it could be tug, it could be fetch, it could be flipping a toy up in the air, it could be catching a toy or catching some food, it could be chasing something, it could be them holding something and carrying something. It might be that you just like physical connection with you. So it's more about the style of the interaction and the style of the play than it is about the thing. I want you to take that as a kind of golden nugget. It's not about the toy. <laughs> You'll hear me say this a lot. Not about the toy. It's what you do with it that counts. Never forget that. Okay. <laughs> the next part of building desire is about access. I got asked this just the other day, actually. Do I leave toys out for my dog? And the answer is no. Years ago, I'd have done what most people do. And there'd have been toys lying all over the place. My dogs to just pick up when they felt like it and leave it if they didn't want. And that's the number one way to, to build apathy towards anything, really. So if they've got always got access to it, and they can take it and leave it whenever they want. That's why sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, my dog's a really picky eater. My first question is, do you leave the food out to them on the floor all day? Yeah, they can graze at it. That's why they just have a kind of, I can take this whenever I like. As I started working with working dogs, we wanted to build desire for different types of toys, depending on the dog. These sorts of things would be the sort of thing that I'd have in my pocket. So these would be hidden away. I wouldn't leave them just lying about. When I did bring out the golden nugget, it's, oh, I've seen other toys, but that's my favorite. That is my favorite. And she's got it and we're going to play and I love it. When you do that, the desire for playing with you and playing with this style of play that they love starts to really up limiting access to the reward in general. That's a good way to build desire. In fact, I would say it's pretty much essential, especially if you have a dog that does have a mediocre approach to toys. The next piece of the interactive play puzzle around building desire is activating play is all done by you. Now, a lot of people will say, I'll wait till the dog brings me the toy and then I'll play. Let's switch that around. It's fine, it's okay. But if I'm the person that activates the play, I'm the person that goes to get the golden toy. And I'm like, are you ready? Are we gonna play? The excitement from the dog. What we're really doing there is making everything reinforcing comes through you. If you can create a way of playing that makes you the facilitator of everything reinforcing, then you, let's put that out of the picture, all of a sudden, the value that they have for the play and the style of play transfers to you. That desire, that connection, because you facilitate all things that are rewarding, all of a sudden, you become, in their eyes, this amazing thing. And all of a sudden, connection starts to shift away from the environment so much. And all of a sudden, you become the center of their world. I hope this video has really helped you understand why it's worthwhile learning how to play with your dog. Now, the golden nuggets in this video are pretty endless. Rewatch the video over again. If you know someone just like you and needs help with their dog, share the video with them. If you'd like to learn more about game-based training, why it's different, how it can help you and your dog, then I've got a free web class. This web class has the potential to change the way you think about training your dog. How training your dog could be way more fun than it currently is. 
and how it can get you results like magic. All you need to do is click the link in the description below to register for the web class. It's totally free. If you do like the video, give it a thumbs up. That helps more people see the video. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you in the next video.